Coming up, an incredibly well-preserved Bronze Age sword, summer field schools, and a Roman mausoleum in central London. Welcome to Time Team News, a new feature where we bring you archaeology news and all the latest discoveries from Britain and around the world. Well, it is a little breezy out here today, but I'm taking the opportunity to get outside. Now, we've done these news bites every so often and your response was, please make these a series. Would love more like this. Make this a monthly feature. So we thought, well, OK, then we will. It's also an opportunity to find out more about the team's wider activities whilst the programmes are in production. So, for example, I've been busy in Modbury in Devon, working with the local community there to discover more about their local heritage. If you haven't already seen it, there's Digwatch coverage over on our Patreon channel and the full episode is in post-production and it'll air here on our YouTube channel in the future. So let's crack on. There have been numerous archaeological discoveries in the news recently that have caught my eye. Here's just a few of them. Our first story takes us to Nordlingen, an ancient town in Bavaria in southeast Germany. Now, some of you may recognise its terracotta rooftops from the closing act of the film Willy Wonka and his Chocolate Factory from 1971. But this summer, it was the scene of some incredible archaeological discoveries, burials dating back some 3,400 years to the Bronze Age in the 14th century BC. The finds include an incredibly intact bronze sword, which apparently hasn't been used and it is in an incredible state of preservation. Professor Matthias Feil, head of the Bavarian State Department of Monuments and Sites, said the state of preservation is extraordinary. During the European Bronze Age, there were many different types of swords, but this particular sword is characterised by its octagonal hilt or handle. And this particular type of swords, the ones with the octagonal handles, are found predominantly in South Germany and also a bit further north in the area that's now North Germany and Denmark. The surface of the sword has a vibrant green patina. Now, this has developed on the surface over time due to the copper content of the metal. But originally, the sword would have had a highly polished, dazzling bronze finish. But what's great about this isn't the fact that it's just a very well-preserved sword. You can see the skill that's gone into making something like that but it's actually the fact that it's been discovered in situ, in context. So we've got the original owners there with it, and we can see how it relates to other artefacts as well. One of the things that archaeologists will be able to do is metallurgical analysis on the bronze. So bronze is made of tin and copper predominantly. And so hopefully they'll be able to trace where these raw materials have come from originally. And that gives us a window in to things like the trade of raw materials, the movement of artefacts and of people. So it's a, a fantastic opportunity to be able to find out more about how people lived in the Middle Bronze Age. The sword was found as part of a burial containing the skeletons of an adult female, male and a youth. Now, because the excavations are relatively recent, it's not yet known how the three people were related or if indeed they were. Hopefully further research will be able to tell us more about this. Also, there were other finds discovered, such as bronze arrowheads and other artefacts. Now, whilst the sword is the immediate eye-catching find, post-excavation analysis of the skeletons, the finds and the environmental sampling will eventually provide us with a fuller picture of just who these three people were and the times in which they lived. What an intriguing discovery. We look forward to keeping an eye on this story to see how it develops. We're going to be exploring stories from around the globe. So my next item stems from the Shaanxi province of north central China during the Shang dynasty. 
the Shang dynasty ruled in the Bronze Age between the 16th to the 11th centuries BC, so it's broadly contemporary with the North Lingan sword, dating to around 3,000 years ago. Its capital was Yingsu, an area well known for its archaeology, but these finds come from a new site 350 miles to the east near the banks of the Yellow River. The impressive scale of this site suggests that it was an important regional power base. Structures and features uncovered so far include many buildings made of rammed earth, a traditional building technique, cemeteries and workshops for casting bronze. According to a statement from the Shanxi Academy of Archaeology, preliminary work has revealed the highly developed bronze civilization that existed in northern Shanxi during the late Shang dynasty, one which was closely related to the Yingsu culture, far exceeding previous understanding. The Academy has shared a range of stunning finds, many of which are highly decorative personal items, such as this turquoise and bronze bird ornament. The array of finds that have been discovered demonstrate the various skills that are being used and also the different types of material that are being worked. For example, intricate carvings in jade and bone, gold earrings and fine lacquer work. Meanwhile, the start of summer can only mean one thing, archaeological field schools. Field schools are an excellent opportunity for students and volunteers to hone their archaeological excavation techniques and recording skills. Derek has been out in the beautiful Dorset countryside visiting Bournemouth University's field school, so let's see what he's been up to. Thanks Danny. Archaeological field schools are one of the most important parts of the archaeological process in the UK and I'm in Wintervorn Kingston in Dorset on the site of the Duratriguez Big Dig with my friend, colleague and long-time Time Team regular Miles Russell to talk about what he's been up to in the field with our Bournemouth University students. Miles, what have you been up to the last few weeks? Uh, or really the last uh, six weeks we've been excavating uh, a large uh, late Iron Age settlement. So this is what's known as a, a banjo enclosure. It's an elite farmstead, uh, really existed about 300 to 100 BC. We've got storage pits everywhere. We've got roundhouses, we've got Iron Age burials, uh, and we've got evidence of a lot of, of earlier activity going on as well from, from the early Bronze Age. So quite a lot. <laughs> Amazing. So what sort of things have our students been up to this year? Well, our students have really, this is, they, you know, they're essentially their training course. So learning how to detect, how to record features, how to excavate and, and sample. So most of them have been investigating these storage pits, which are the central sort of, uh, I, I guess, uh, storage facility of the Iron Age settlement. Um, much of them just contain soil, uh, but it, what we're finding at the bottom of, of a lot of these, these pits is just before they were backfilled, there's some sort of ritual deposit going in. So in some cases, it's dog burials. In other cases, it's complete stacks of pottery. One or two examples have had human remains uh, and some sort of cut up remains of horse and cow. But it seems to be some kind of ritual deposit, perhaps a thank you to the gods of the land uh, after a successful harvest. But pretty much every pit has got something like this right at the bottom of it. That's really interesting. But any any particularly special finds this year? We've had a lot. I mean, this has been very good for domestic evidence. We've had lots of evidence of weaving. We've had large triangular loom weights. We've had spindle whirls. We've had weaving combs. So as far as, as textile manufacturing goes, there's a lot of evidence for that. But as, as far as uh, burial evidence, I mean, it, it's absolutely absolutely fantastic because this is one of the few parts uh, of Iron Age Britain where we know that the local communities buried their dead in recognisable cemeteries. So it, it sounds a bit ghoulish, but it's the finding of, of uh, human remains, which for us is, is the real treasure because it's the one part of Britain in the pre-Roman Iron Age where we can identify individuals, look at diseases, look at the cause of death, look at dietary isotopes and really get detailed information about the people. So from that, you know, that's pure gold to us. Brilliant. Thank you, Miles. Thanks, Derek. And we'll be continuing this story next time when we rejoin the Bournemouth team in the lab to find out what happens next, an area close to my heart, the finds processing. Now from Sherds to the Shard, Roman remains in central London. Development at Southwark has revealed what's been described by the excavators as the most intact Roman mausoleum to be discovered in Britain. London, or Londinium as the Romans called it, was founded by the Romans after the Claudian invasion of AD 43, along the banks of the River Thames where it became a strategic trading post and a military stronghold. 
It's not unusual for new developments to reveal glimpses of London's Roman origins. In fact, a whole host have been discovered over the years. But this latest discovery at the Liberty of Southwark is just a stone's throw away from some of London's key landmarks. The excavation was carried out by the Museum of London Archaeology, or MOLA. Senior archaeologist at MOLA, Antonietta Lurs, said it provides a fascinating window into the living conditions and lifestyle of this part of the city in the Roman period. The small mausoleum features a beautiful mosaic which was discovered in situ and underneath that is another mosaic, so this suggests that the mausoleum has been in use for an extended period of time. According to the statement, the mausoleum may have been used by the wealthier members of society, or it may have even been owned by a burial club, where members paid a monthly fee to be buried inside. The developers have said that they are committed to retaining and restoring the mausoleum for public display and enjoyment, to provide a tangible link between the Roman archaeology of Southwark and the site on which the artefacts were found. If you'd like to discover more about Roman London, there are remains hidden in plain sight all around the city. You just have to know where to look. For example, Tower Hill Tube Station. There's a great article on Roman London in the August edition of Current Archaeology, which also just happens to feature Time Team on its cover. And speaking of Mola, who excavated the mausoleum, Tony Robinson, Bone expert Jackie McKinley and Time Team series producer Tim Taylor were recently spotted going through the doors of the central office. Look out for more news on that in the near future. And finally, Italian archaeologists have uncovered what they think are the remains of the Roman Emperor Nero's theatre near the Vatican in Rome. Now, whilst it had been mentioned in an ancient text written by Pliny the Elder, the exact location of the theatre was previously unknown. And we hope to bring you more on this in future instalments. So those are just some of the stories that have caught my eye recently. But please do let us know your favourite archaeological discoveries or any items that you'd like us to include in the comments section below. You can find 3D models of the stories we've featured this month over on our Patreon channel. And if you'd like to see us do more excavations, you can help to make that happen by becoming a Patreon member. Not only do you get access to a range of additional extras such as dig watch and interviews and masterclasses, but your ongoing membership directly supports us to make more episodes. Please do remember to subscribe and press that like button. It really does make all the difference. So that's all from me for now. Thank you for bearing with me outside in the weather and I look forward to seeing you next time. Join Time Team on Patreon to access exclusive 3D models, masterclasses and behind-the-scenes insights. <laughs>